Welcome to Average Joe's Pool. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Lucassi's Hybrid Series. And for this video we have an absolute doozy for you. This is filled with mystery and intrigue. And we must issue a warning if you are of a nervous disposition because you're going to be seeing very graphic scenes of brand new unused Lucassi cues literally being sawn to pieces. Now you probably want to know exactly why. Well, we've got a lot to get through. Let's have a look. So first of all, who are Lucassi? Well, Lucassi is a brand that's owned by Q and Case. And Q and Case are a large American wholesale distributor for all types of pool related products. And Q and Case actually own several brands themselves, including Players, Pure X, Rage, and what we have here, which is their top tier brand, this is Lucassi. Now the Lucassi brand has been around for quite a number of years. And don't be fooled, although it has an Italian sounding name, all of Lucassi Qs currently under Q and Case's ownership are actually manufactured in China. Now, as we have said before, don't let the simple fact that this is a Chinese manufactured Q put you off. Many of the world's largest pool brands, including the likes of Lucassi and Predator, have all of their Qs manufactured in China. So yes, of course, you can get cheap Chinese rubbish, but also coming out of China are some of the world's finest Qs. So what we have here, the LHC97, is actually part of Lucassi's hybrid range. And when it comes to Lucassi Qs, they have two main types, Lucassi Custom and the higher tier, Lucassi Hybrid, which is exactly what we have here. With regards to pricing on Lucassi Qs, the Lucassi Custom, which come in a little bit cheaper than these hybrids, they start at about $460 currently and go up to around the $1,100 mark. Whereas the Lucassi Hybrid are a little bit more expensive, starting at around $600, going up to around $1,300. And with regards to pricing on this particular model, the LHC97, this comes in at $801.50. So Lucassi is very much considered a prestige brand. And of course, their cues are available in a wide range of different designs, so there's something to suit everybody's taste. Now, one question that probably immediately springs to mind, well, what's the difference between Lucassi Custom and Lucassi Hybrid? Well, quite simply, Lucassi Hybrid cues tend to be packed with the very latest in Lucassi technology, and they tend to put all of their special features into the Hybrid series. And many of those features do actually trickle down into the Lucassi Custom series, which are a little bit cheaper. So a simple way to look at it would be that Lucassi Custom Qs are a little bit simpler, whereas the Hybrid series is going to be the highest technology available from the brand. And when it comes to weight, all Lucassi Qs are available in 18 through 21 ounce options, including half ounce increments. And if you are interested in buying yourself one of these cues, they are available to buy on Amazon, current price $801.50. And we will be adding Amazon links into the video description. So if this video is helpful for you, please be sure to click on our Amazon links. Now, when it comes to buying your Lucassi Q, it is really essential to ensure that you buy it from the right place, as silly as that sounds. And the Amazon links that we'll be adding are definitely the correct ones. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why is that so important? Well, we've got a bit of a story for you that we're going to be getting into later in the video. Now included in that price, as you may well expect when you're talking about cues at this price point, the Lucassi is supplied with a full lifetime warranty, and that does include cover against warpage. Now again, that's something that we might also be coming back to discuss later in this video, so make sure you keep watching. You must play the game. You must stick to the rules. So first of all, when it comes to packaging, the Lucassi does come in a standard clear poly bag. However, that poly bag is then placed inside quite a nice velvet style case complete with the Lucassi branding. As you can see, the entire queue from top to toe is finished in maple. And with regards to design, we have five split point inlays, which are described as crushed blue velvet. And we have five here and also five towards the butt end. Additionally, we do have a triple silver ringed design on both sides of the joint and both sides of the grip, as well as on the end of the butt. 
And to cap things off, we have this rather fetching stainless steel butt cap. And for the grip on this cue, what we have here, this is Lucassi's Fusion G5 grip, which is a rubberized grip. And this is complete with the x shocks dampening system. And as far as the joint goes on our Lucassi here, what we have here, this is a genuine Unilock joint. And Unilock is a quick release joint. It needs a couple of twists and it's away. So next up, what have we got on this cue uh, with regards to logos? Well, uh, with regards to logos, we do have several on this queue. So starting on the butt, on the silver butt cap here, we have the Lucassi logo. Then moving up the queue towards the bottom of the grip here, we have the LH logo, which of course is Lucassi Hybrid. And then moving further up uh, next to our joint here, we actually have a couple more logos. We have uh, the Unilock logo right here, which unfortunately is a sticker. And then if we flip that around on the bottom of the uh, shaft here, we also have the LC logo, which actually stands for Lucassi Custom. Now, the more eagle-eyed amongst you may well have noticed that we have two contrasting logos. We've got an LH on the grip, Lucassi Hybrid, but we very clearly have LC, Lucassi Custom, here on the shaft. And remember that Lucassi Custom and Lucassi Hybrid are two different series within the Lucassi range. So why exactly are we seeing contrasting logos on the same queue? Well, indeed, that is a very, very good question and a question that we wanted answered ourselves. Unfortunately, it didn't quite turn out to be that simple, as we'll take a look at later in this video. So moving up the queue, let's take a look at the shaft. And the shaft on the LHC97 is Lucassi's Zero Flex Point shaft, which incorporates a special design that Lucassi have created, which is actually hidden away within the ferrule. And this is one of Lucassi's low deflection shafts. And as you may well expect, we do have a full pro taper on the shaft. And one of the coolest things that we have about this shaft, this is a radial construction shaft, which means it's actually been made from eight separate pieces of wood, which have all been bound together. So if you were to literally cut this shaft in half and take a look at the cross section, it would look kind of like sections of a pie. And on the shaft here, the last two and a half inches, as to be expected, we do have a varnish finish to help protect the logo. And the remainder of the shaft that appears to be sealed, has a nice smooth quality to it. And with regards to the tip that's on this cue, uh, this is actually a Kamui tip and it comes uh, soft as standard and it's meant to measure in at 12.75 millimeters. And when we measured that in for ourselves, came in super close, 12.73 millimeters. And for our ferrule here, as we can see, it's finished in white and ferrule length uh, measured in at 21.85 millimeters. And with regards to length, when it comes to our Lucassi, this is a 58 inch Q. Uh, when we measured this in, actually measured in at a grand total of 58 and 11 sixteenths inches. However, if you remove from that the length of the butt cap and the length of the tip, what you're left over with is pretty much spot on 58. And that total Q length comprised of a shaft length and butt length, which came in almost identical. Both of them came in just a hair under 29 and 3 8 inches. So next let's talk diameters. And the diameter that we had measured at the butt here came in at 32.05 millimeters. And our diameter here at the shaft came in at 21.4 millimeters. When it comes to weight, we always select the 19 ounce version for our review cues. And when we weighed the Lucassi, it came in over that. It weighed in at 19.315 ounces. That's more than a full quarter ounce overweight. And that total weight comprised of a butt weight of 15.135 ounces and a shaft weight of 4.19 ounces. And whenever we get a cue in for review, we do like to remove that butt cap and have a look at what we're facing on the inside. And what we found in the end of our cue was a very well finished cue, complete with a one ounce weight. And the weight itself was absolutely spot on when we put it on our calibrated scale, it came in at 1.001 ounces. And we did also check this cue for its center of balance. And the center of balance came in at 19 and 1 8 inches, measured from the rear of the queue, including the butt cap. So now we've checked all of these specifications on our Lucassi, it's time to move on to the technical test. And of course, to get stuck into the juicy story that we have behind this queue. Let's have a look. 
For our first test we'll be checking the Lucassi for straightness and in addition to a basic visual inspection we'll be running three straightness tests and first up is by far the easiest, the table roll test. And as to be expected, this basic test throws up no obvious issues for the Lucassi. The roll appears to be nice and smooth with no visible wobbles or inconsistencies. So let's move on to a tougher test. Test two is the rail roll test. And for this test, we simply roll the cue along the solid rail of the table whilst watching the tip for wobble. And as we can see, unfortunately, we definitely do have some wobble present in the Lucassi. Now it's not too bad, but this is an expensive cue. So let's move on to the toughest test and find out what's happening with test number three, the cue rollers. And we can now see the wobble better now it is isolated. And for some reason, this cue is also producing some vibration on the rollers. But that aside, we do have a distinct alignment issue. And as we move the front roller up to the middle of the shaft, we can see that the wobble is greatly reduced. And when we move the roller even further up towards the end of the queue, the tip wobble is eliminated. So we definitely do have a very small straightness issue. It's far from terrible, and if this was a $100 queue, this would be a great result. But this is an $800 queue, and so really what we should be seeing is nearing perfection. So we'll award the Lucassi a very average, and should be better, two and a half stars out of five for straightness. think in the years to come people will appreciate us for what we're doing here so before we start our play testing we need to run a couple of deflection tests starting with squirt and this test is conducted over a distance of 75 inches which is the distance from the head spot to the rear rail on a nine foot table and we use maximum parallel english with a hard shot and we repeat the test for at least 10 times on both sides for an accurate average and the Lucassi performs strongly, coming in with a squirt of 2 and 5 eighths inches, which is considerably above average. Being a low deflection shaft, it would have been nice to see a touch better, but it's far from disappointing. And so on to our next test, natural pivot length. And for this test, we gradually increase the bridge length whilst applying full backhand English until we find our longest possible bridge length. And we then replicate that at least three times on both sides to ensure accuracy. And the key takeaway from this test is simple. Longer is better. And the Lucassi dominated this test with an amazing natural pivot length of 15 and one quarter inches, which is a stunning result and way, way above average. And so for the final part of our performance test, we get to move on and do the fun stuff. We're going to actually start playing with this cue. And here at Average Joe's Pool, every single product that we review, we ensure gets a minimum of five full hours on the table to ensure that we can give it a fair review. And so it is Lucassi hybrid time. Let's play.
Also, thanks to some scheduling conflicts, I've had longer to play on the Lucasia than I was expecting. I've been playing around with this queue now for two full weeks. And the main point to take away is what a beautiful queue this is to play with. Now, one of the key points when it comes to this particular model is this does have quite a soft hit. And of course, that's helped along by the fact that this has a Kamui soft tip. That does make it ideal for doing things like shorter shots or softer shots or even finesse type shots. You do tend to get a lot of feedback through the soft feel of the cue. Now that's not to say, of course, that this cue is not good at hard hits. It handles those extremely well also. And what I found with this cue, if you're playing longer shots, we have to apply a lot of English and therefore you have to adjust your aim somewhat to allow for the level of squirt. This low deflection shaft is particularly well suited for that job. Of course, you do have to dial it in uh, like you do with any cue. You have to get used to the way that it does it. But once you've kind of dialed it in and got a feel for it, it's really, really consistent at those long shots with that added spin. And consistency is definitely one of the major pluses when it comes to this cue. It's very rare that this thing will let you down. I experienced virtually no miscues using this cue over the last couple of weeks. So overall, as you can tell, I was extremely impressed with the Lucassi Hybrid. But was there anything about this that people might not like? Well, ultimately, this is one of those pull cues where there's actually very little to dislike. It's an extremely capable cue, gives excellent feedback and is very, very consistent. Now, just about the only thing that you could pick a hole on when it comes to this particular Lucassi hybrid that we have here is possibly the softness of the hit. Now, I personally quite like the softness of the hit. I find it gives me a lot of control and definitely a lot more feedback than I would expect to get using a harder tipped cue. However, if you're used to playing and your preference is for hard tips, then you might find the general hit on this particular cue a little bit soft for you. Now, of course, you could just go ahead and change the tip and put a hard tip onto this cue. However, Lucassi have selected purposefully a soft tip for this particular model. And I would like to think that the tip selection that Lucassi made is not just generated at random. They actually play with these cues, get a bit of a feel for them and decide what the best combination of tip would be for this particular shaft and butt. And so if you are a player who favours the feel that you get from a harder tip, this might not be the best model for you. But of course, what we have here, this is just one of the models that's available in the Lucassi hybrid range. And there are probably other models that start off with a different combination and maybe a medium tip. Going from a medium tip to a hard, of course, is far less of a jump than going straight from soft all the way up to hard. And talking about the softer hit that you get from this particular cue, of course, that doesn't make it ideal when it comes to braking. Now, of course, the cue is capable of generating a decent amount of power and it can do fairly decent brakes. And also remember, of course, we have that lovely soft Kamui tip fitted onto this cue and you don't really want to be pushing that too hard. But if you do end up using this cue for lots of brake shots, then you may well find that over a period of time that you might get that mushrooming uh, around the tip. And of course, that's something you want to avoid, especially when the tips are quite expensive, like we have with the Kamui here. However, all that said, if you're spending $800 on a playing cue, then chances are you probably have a separate brake cue or a brake and jump cue as well, which of course you're going to be using for the brakes. And as you can tell, I was really blown away with the performance of this cue. This really is a wonderful cue to play with. So let's go ahead and give it some scores for its performance. So despite the Lucassi coming in with a fairly average result during our squirt test, the proof of this cue is really in the pudding. It's an outstanding cue to play with and offers lots of feedback and control, scoring it a near perfect four and a half stars out of five for performance. No more room in hell. The dead will walk here. So when it comes to features, our LHC97 is definitely fully loaded. And when you start looking at the Lucassi hybrid range, one thing that you will notice quite quickly is they do have a large selection of various different models, but not all of those models are the same with regards to the features that they have. So it's not a case when you're buying a Lucassi hybrid that you just choose the color that you want because they're basically all the same. Each of these models is quite distinct in the feature set that is included with each. And as I mentioned, the LHC97 is a particularly well-stacked model when it comes to features. So let's have a look at some of the key features of this gear. 
So first of all, let's look at the grip that we have on this queue. This is the Lucassi Fusion G5 wrap, complete with the X shocks dampening system. So first of all, the Fusion G5 part of this grip. What we essentially have here is a rubber grip and it has a textured handle with patterns running in various different directions for maximum grip. And then underneath that, what we have, we have the x shocks dampening system, and that's essentially a very thin layer of cushioning material. So when you squeeze this, it has a very slight, squidgy, soft feel to it. And that helps make this rubber grip just a little bit softer and makes it super comfortable to the hand. Now, one of the things that I liked about this grip is, yes, it is a rubber grip, uh, but the actual rubber material that it's made from is not overly grippy. Now the grip that we have from this wrap actually comes from the pattern that's molded into the grip rather than the rubber material itself. And I actually found this to be quite a big bonus. Now this will depend on your particular personal pull stance. But if you have a pull stance where this rubber grip might well brush past part of your clothes, what I often find with rubber grips is they tend to snag and grab at your clothes. Whereas, like I said, the rubber that they've used here, the rubber itself is not too grippy. So it actually passes past your clothing nice and easily. But we do still have a lot of grip on this because of all these molded patterns that we have running in those different directions. And when we add into that this fact that we have this dampening system, and it is quite subtle, the layer of dampening material must be very, very thin, uh, but it does have a very soft uh, feel to it. And so overall, it makes for a very comfortable and a very functional grip. So the next feature to look at is going to be the shaft that we have on this queue. Uh, the shaft that we have here on this particular model is Lucassi's radial shaft. Now, if you've not heard the term for radial construction shaft before, you might be wondering what it actually is. And essentially what we have here, instead of this shaft being made of a single piece of wood, instead they actually splice together different sections of wood. And we have a eight section radial construction for this particular shaft. So if you were to cut this in half, and we are going to be doing that later in the video, and looked at it from the end on, you actually see these little different sections of wood. Almost looks like little sections of pie, like a trivial pursuit piece with all the little sections in it. And that's what we have here. This is not a single piece construction. We have this made from eight pieces of wood. So what are the advantages of having a shaft which is a radial construction? Well, the main theory behind these radial construction shafts is that they tend to be a little bit stronger than they would be if you're using a single piece of wood. And of course, that makes it ideal when you're manufacturing a cue where you want to try and lower the amount of deflection. And also, because these shafts tend to be that little bit stronger, there's also less tendency for these to warp over time. Now, the trade-off there, of course, is the process of manufacturing the shaft is a lot more involved than it would be if it was made from a single piece of wood. And so, of course, your radial construction shafts do tend to be more expensive than your traditional single piece shafts. So that's definitely a nice feature to have, and it does help to somewhat justify the high price that we have on this queue. And as we saw during our squirt and natural pivot length tests, the radial shaft definitely does help to produce some very strong results. So next up, let's move our way towards the end of the queue. And as mentioned before, the tip that we have on here, this is a Kamui soft tip. This is a very high end tip. This tip on its own is probably worth somewhere in the region of $30. And another key feature that we have sat just behind our tip here, this particular model also has Lucassi's zero flex point system. Now the way that this essentially works, on the inside of the ferrule, obviously we have the, uh, the wood uh, from the shaft here, it does pass through onto the inside of the ferrule. However, they've taken the mass of that wood right the way down. So rather than having the wood sat immediately on the inside of the ferrule, it's much, much thinner. So it goes to a very fine point. And they actually surround that with a polymer on the inside of the ferrule. And this is Lucassi's own unique design. And they've done this specifically to help reduce deflection. Now, how effective that actually is, having that polymer here on the inside of the ferrule, is kind of hard to gauge. But we had very good results from the queue. So maybe it's actually doing something. And the other thing to mention quite quickly is the profile that we have here on the shaft. Now it is a full pro taper. However, the uh, taper itself, the shoulder sits quite a long way down the shaft. And what you'll often find on more extreme pro tapers, is it will come in at quite a hard angle and will have a shoulder typically sat around this area here. 
And what they're trying to do is shave as much weight away from that shaft as quickly as possible. So you can get it down as thin as possible and then run that as straight as you can right the way off of the tip. However, on the Lucassi here, we have a slightly more gentle pro taper. We have our shoulder. It looks like it almost comes in on two stages. We have one here and another here. So we're sat around this area here. And from that point forward, it's actually quite gentle. So obviously we have a very little weight here. In this area right in here, we have a little bit more weight than you might normally expect to see. And of course, in reality, we don't actually have to worry about that too much because we have all of that distance, which is more than enough space to ensure that you're getting the thinnest possible profile all the way through the likely length that you're going to be using on the bridge. So then next, moving on to the joint that we have here, and this is a genuine Unilock joint. And Unilock are definitely considered to be a top end joint. They are quick, uh, very quick release joint. And uh, the joints themselves, uh, from my basic understanding of Q manufacturing, is these joints do tend to be quite expensive. Now you will find these joints uh, often on cheap Chinese queues, but they're not always necessarily genuine Unilock. Whereas what we have here most definitely is 100% genuine and 100% Unilock. So that's absolutely spot on. So next, moving on to the uh, inlays, and this is uh, one of the big features uh, that we have here on the LHC 97. Now, Lucassi described the finish of these as crushed blue velvet, and they have a very distinct mother of pearl type look to them, and they also look fairly 3D as well. And then additionally, we have the sets of triple silver rings, either side of the joint and also either side of the grip, and a final one right down towards the butt. Speaking of which, we have this gorgeous stainless steel butt cap complete with engraved Lucassi logo, which really does set the uh, the queue off nicely and makes it look just like it should, a nice expensive queue. And talking about butts, the rubber butt cap that they've used here is absolutely superb. And this is one of those little niggly things that always gets under my skin because these butt caps very often on queues are made from a very hard and very unforgiving rubber. So between shots, when you're putting the cue around, you tend to get a lot of vibrations and has that very dead feel to it, whereas this is super soft and a pleasure to use. And of course, that's only really applicable if you're playing for several hours at a time. When you've got that non-responsive butt, it really does get under my skin. So it's great to see we have a super soft butt cap on our Lucassi. And a nice little hidden feature, if you like, when you remove that butt cap, we have a weight on the inside. And if you look very carefully at that weight, you may well notice it's actually got a small hole on the inside of that weight. And the reason why we have that threaded hole in the weight bolt is that it's ready to accept the balance right Q extension. So if you want to make your Q longer by adding an extension onto the handle, Balance Right, which is a brand that's owned and operated by Q and Case, the owners of Lucassi, is designed to fit straight onto the end of this Q. So as I mentioned before, the Lucassi hybrid that we have here is definitely fully loaded with features. And thankfully, all of those features seem to be for the overall benefit of the Q. So let's go ahead and rate our LHC 97 for features. The Lucassi Hybrid Series is specifically designed to be a showcase for Lucassi's various Q technologies. And on the feature-packed LHC 97, we have almost all of them on board. And thankfully, they all add to the betterment of the Q's performance, rather than being simple gimmicks. All of this added tech scores our hybrid model full marks, 5 stars out of 5 for features. We created the perfect soldier from cheap hoodlums and thugs. When it comes to quality, just taking a quick glance over our Lucassi hybrid here, you can immediately tell this is definitely made from very high quality components. And it's one of those cues that not only looks great from a distance, but also looks great when you get up nice and close and start looking at the fine details. A great example of that is the quality that we have here on the inlays. These inlays are virtually flawless. You can get up as close as you like, zoom in with the camera, get out your magnifying glass, whatever you want to do, and have a really good look at these. You see how well inset these are, and you can't feel anything around as you feel your way around the queue. Like I said, they're absolutely perfect. Likewise, the uh, transition we have here between uh, all of our components uh, we are talking about quite an expensive queue, and so you would expect these to be absolutely perfect. And I'm glad to report that they are. So the finish, the quality control, uh, if you like, when it comes to these uh, queues is, yes, we have to remember 
that these cues are made in China. But as I always say, don't necessarily put a cue down just because it's not American made. Some of the best cues in the world are coming out of China these days. When you're seeing stuff of this quality, it's easy to see and appreciate why. And looking at the wrap, uh, again, the uh, finish, super smooth on both ends. Yes, it does have a visible seam, as you would expect. Uh, there it is. Uh, but again, it's finished absolutely perfectly. It's not raised in any particular areas and you sometimes get a little raised bit in the corner there. You, know, you literally can't fault this cue at all uh, when it comes to some of these features. So overall, yes, this is definitely a very beautiful cue that screams quality. But we do have to remember also that this is an expensive queue. When it comes to queues in this kind of price category, we really are expecting to see something that's close to perfection. So is there anything that we didn't like when it came to quality on the Lucassi? And yes, we did find a couple of things that we are going to go ahead and pick holes in. The first thing is uh, the Unilock sticker that we have here at the base of the shaft. So first things first, it is actually quite annoying that it's a sticker rather than being printed on the shaft. And I assume that Lucassi don't print it onto the shaft because they want to keep the options open about what joint might be fitted onto the shaft. But that does unfortunately seem like somewhat of a money saving exercise. And what I found particularly annoying with this uh, sticker is that I wear a glove when I play and the edge of this sticker is actually catching on my glove as, as I was holding the cue and the corner of this sticker is now starting to lift. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and remove that sticker entirely when I continue playing with this cue because it really does annoy me and really it shouldn't be there. Hopefully that will peel off without leaving any residue on the shaft. And in my opinion, at this kind of price point, we really shouldn't be having stickers on the shaft. You have two options, either you print it on or you leave it off. And the next minor little thing that I'm going to pick on is actually the rubber butt cap that we have here. As I mentioned before, I actually really, really like this butt cap. However, there is one small problem with it. And that is the very simple fact that there is a very small but visible gap all the way around it between the rubber butt cap and the butt itself. And it doesn't matter how hard you push this in, you can't quite get rid of that tiny little gap. However, of course, that really is a very, very minor issue, but we are talking about very expensive cues. When you're spending this kind of money, you do demand perfection. And so if I find something like that, I'm going to let you know about it. Now, the next thing that I found on this, and this will be particular uh, to my particular queue, and when you buy uh, your Lucassi, I'm sure you won't have this issue, but I did find one small problem on my shaft. That's what he says. Damn it. And the problem that I found is I actually have a small mark uh, on the shaft uh, just uh, in here. And it looks kind of like a, maybe like a burnish mark, a slight kind of a burn scuff or something like that. Now, when you look at it straight on, it is barely visible. Uh, so that's probably why it passed through quality control. However, when you then turn it round and you're actually looking down the shaft, like you would be when you're playing a shot, that mark becomes very visible and very apparent. And of course, it's quite annoying to have a visible mark as you're looking down your queue. And really, that should have been picked up by quality control. Like I said, I can understand why it wasn't, because when you look at it straight, it looks OK. But you would think they would you know, have a good look around the queue. And really, that should have been spotted. So those problems really are only small little niggles. However, I did find something that is perhaps a little bit more concerning and by far the biggest issue that I found with this particular queue. And the problem that I found on the shaft here, remembering this is a radial construction shaft, when you turn it through your fingers, you can actually feel those uh, little sections of wood that make up the overall construction. And what you're hoping to feel is when you turn that through, it should be super smooth. Uh, however, you can definitely feel these slight undulations as it switches between those different sections of wood as you turn it through your hand. Now, thankfully, this is fairly subtle and it didn't seem to have uh, any uh, ill effects when it comes to uh, balance or performance of the cue. And as I mentioned before, when you're spending this kind of money on a pool cue, you really are expecting to get something that's close to perfection. And so when you do find a flaw such as this, it does somewhat let down your overall opinion of the quality of the cue. And that really is a shame because this cue is a million miles away from being a badly made cue. Quite the opposite, in fact, which is why I was quite surprised to see this. But thankfully, as mentioned, it doesn't seem to affect the actual performance of the cue. And of course, when you play pool, you don't tend to twist it around. You tend to slide it backwards and forwards. So in reality, you probably wouldn't even notice that unless you were looking for flaws like I am. So taking all that into account, let's score our Lucassi Hybrid for quality. 
So with the Lucassi Hybrid, we definitely have a very well-made and high-quality queue. Many of the key features are outstanding, but there were a couple of minor issues which let it down a touch overall. But the Lucassi scores a very respectable 3.5 stars out of 5 for quality. When it comes to value, there's no escaping the simple fact that we're very much in the expensive Paul Q zone. We're certainly not top end when it comes to price, but we're far from chump change. So how does the Lucassi Hybrid compare to its rivals when it comes to value? Well, with a budget of $800, when we look at Predator, which are also made in China, you'd be towards the lower ranges of their queues. Maybe a 9K1 or a Sport 2, both of which have the 3143 radial construction shaft, similar to the Lucassi. From McDermott, you could just about slip into one of their top tier H-series queues with the adjustable weight system. But at this budget, you would be limited by the G-core shaft rather than radial. Or maybe even the Select Series SL9, which comes with their carbon fiber shaft at $810. Or possibly the Qtech Synergy, coming in a little bit cheaper, but again moving away from the splice shaft and over to carbon fiber. So whilst there are many options from various manufacturers out there at this price point, the Lucassi offers a package that would be very tricky to match like for like, especially if the spliced radial construction shaft is your main driving factor. So the Lucassi stands fairly strong in this price range compared to its rivals, scoring it a decent 3.5 stars out of 5 for value. If tech features are your thing, then Lucassi's hybrid series could well be for you. So it's now time to award the Lucassi Hybrid with an official Average Joe's rating. And to do this, we take our scores from across our five test category and very simply calculate the average. And the Lucassi Hybrid finishes with a very decent 3.8 stars. And whilst it's not quite perfect, it is a wonderful cue to play with. And the diversity of the hybrid range will definitely offer something for everyone. What can I do you for? I promised you a bit of a story when it came to the Lucassi that we have here, and indeed we do have one for you. So I'm going to give you a quick abbreviated version of the story. And when this queue first arrived, I noticed immediately we had an LH logo here, but an LC logo on the shaft. Which of course seems strange to me, because that's Lucassi Hybrid, whereas that is Lucassi Custom. So I was a bit concerned that maybe I had the wrong shaft fitted to the Q. And so I decided to contact Q and Case, who is the owner of Lucassi. And unfortunately, it did take 10 days for them to get back to me. And they only got back to me once I sent them a follow-up email. And they explained that no, your Lucassi hybrid should come with an LH logo in both positions. So I thought, well, that's fair enough. But I took a look on their website and I noticed that all of their shafts, regardless of whether they're Lucassi hybrid shafts or Lucassi custom shafts, on their website, every single one of them comes with an LC logo. They don't supply a single shaft currently that has an LH logo. That did seem a little bit strange to me. So what I did, I went onto their website and I copied their images, which are quite small, into Photoshop and zoomed in. And you can very clearly see in those images, once you're zoomed in, that they have an LC logo. And I did that not only for the LHC97 that we had here, but also for every other Lucassi hybrid model that's on their website. And every single one had LC on the shaft. Now, we actually had to make a warranty claim on this queue, which is what I'm going to cover in just a second. And interestingly enough, when we received the replacement, which was shipped to us direct from Q and Case, surprise, surprise, it came with an LH and an LC. And so if you buy a Lucassi Hybrid Q, do not be surprised if it arrives and it has an LC logo on the shaft. Now, although that does seem to be a bit of a mismatch, you have LH and LC, apparently that's completely normal. So that strange little anomaly aside, as I mentioned, we actually had to make a warranty claim on this queue. And the reason for that is what you see here, this is the warranty replaced queue. The first one that we had that we ordered via Amazon arrived and was about as straight as a banana. We put that first queue onto the queue rollers and it had a terrible wobble, completely unacceptable at any price, let alone $800. But that shouldn't be a problem, of course, because Lucassi cover all of their products with a full lifetime warranty. And so I simply went ahead and made a warranty claim. 
Now I say simply because it turned out to be far from that. The first person that I spoke to at Q&K was very dismissive and also very unhelpful, especially considering I just spent $800 on one of their queues and I couldn't even use it. It was still brand new and completely unchalked. And unfortunately it did seem they were trying to wriggle out of their own warranty on a technicality. Their first suggestion, well, why don't you just send the queue back to Amazon? I said, well, because I was waiting 10 days for you to reply to me, unfortunately, that 30 day window had now closed. They then went on to say that their warranty is only actually valid if the queue is bought from an authorized dealer. And I explained that the queue had been bought from Amazon and I sent them a copy of the invoice. And this did cause a certain amount of confusion. Long story short, uh, we have an international Amazon account and the listing that we uh, bought the queue from had actually expired. And so they couldn't see the seller name in the invoice. And so they were refusing to honor the warranty because they couldn't tell which authorized dealer it would have been bought from via the Amazon listing that had now expired. And their solution that they offered forward is hey, we'll give you a 50% discount on the replacement queue. So great, I thought, I've just spent $800 on a brand new queue that I haven't even used yet, and so I get to spend another $400. I get to spend $1,200 for an $800 queue. Thanks, Lucassi. So as you can imagine, that didn't sit well. Now, thankfully, the person that I was communicating with with regards to the warranty that was also the same person that was giving me the incorrect information about the mismatched logos passed me on to someone who turned out to be far more helpful. And after a couple of emails with the new person, it was all sorted and a replacement queue was arranged. Now, as part of the warranty process, Q and Case didn't want the original queue returned to them, but they had to ensure that it was destroyed. And so they actually wanted us to cut the queue up and send them photographs or video to confirm that it had been done. So as promised, you're now going to witness the destruction of a brand new unused $800 Lucassi hybrid queue. And I should warn you, if you are of a nervous disposition, then you should definitely look away now. What you're about to see are extreme acts of violence against a pool queue in what we lovingly refer to as the Canadian pool queue massacre. And so once we provided that horrific footage directly to queue and case, they sent out the queue that you can see before you. This is our replacement, and this is exactly what has been tested. So in the end, Q and Case did the right thing and supported their Lucassi Q by honoring the warranty. But it did take several hours of my time and over 20 emails to actually get that done. And that certainly didn't impress me. But the long story short, we got it done in the end. So when it comes to the Lucassi hybrid, should you buy one? Well, the simple and resounding answer is definitely a yes. Despite all the nonsense that I had to go through in my particular case with the warranty claim on the Lucassi queue, at the end of the day, that warranty claim did go through and they did supply a replacement queue. And at the end of the day, that first queue that we had that was badly warped, I'm sure was just an anomaly because the replacement queue is absolutely spot on. And this really is a beautiful queue, not just to look at, but also to play with. And although no, it's not 100% perfect, it's not actually that far from it. And it really, really does play exceptionally well. Now, if you would like to buy yourself a Lucassi hybrid, we will be adding uh, links into the video description for both the model we have here, the LHC 97, as well as other Lucassi hybrid models. Now, one very important thing to remember if you are buying one of these, 
as per the Q and case warranty specification, you need to ensure that it's definitely been purchased through an authorized Glucasi dealer. And we've ensured that the Amazon links that you'll find in the video description are 100% definitely for authorized Glucasi dealers. So you can go ahead and order with confidence through those links. So thank you for joining us here at Average Joe's Pool. I hope this video has been helpful or entertaining for you. If it has, we always ask a quick favor in return. Can you at least be sure to hit that like button for us? And whilst you're there, please do also consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got loads more great pool related content on our YouTube channel and loads more to come. So thank you for watching, it's very much appreciated. Until next time, we're all pretty bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it, that's all. By the way, why are we wearing bras on our heads? Ceremonial.